Hey everybody, got enough questions for Q&A video 7. Uh, make sure to keep asking questions, doesn't matter what they're about, it can be about anything, doesn't have to be about gaming, um, doesn't have to be about the channel, it just could be anything. Anyway, um, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first question is from Lazarus174, and he wants to know, what is the longest part of the reviewing process? And he mentions different things like scripting, recording, uploading, establishing the opinion, actually playing it, etc. Typically, the longest process is, of course, playing the game, um, unless it's a really, really short game. Uh, I don't really think I've had any like like that so far. But um, generally, playing the game, and I, I formulate my opinion as I play the game, so um, th that's more of a two-in-one deal. But I don't script, so I, I just do things off the top of my head. Like that I don't even have a script for Q and A. I don't script anything really. Uh, hence why stuff sounds a little bit more, I guess, natural flowing, and uh, probably sounds a little bit more stupid than if I had scripted it, but oh well. Anyway, um, next question is from Omega Wolf Studios. I spelled my name wrong. It's DW Terminator, not Terminator. Anyway, uh, can you please tell your fans your opinion on the console war from a PC gamer's point of view? Um, most of you know that I am a PC gamer. I pretty much always have been when it comes to gaming. Uh, doesn't mean I don't like consoles. I just don't really get them. Um, so, now, I started gaming back during the big console war, which was between Sega and Nintendo, between uh, the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. So, that was those were some great times, let me tell you, because uh, out of those console wars, you got some really, really great games. Uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of exclusivity and that kind of thing. But um, anymore, the console wars are kind of stupid, just because everything gets released on across all consoles now, or at least everything that's worth playing. Really, uh, you don't really see many exclusives anymore that are really differentiate from exclusives on other consoles. I mean, like you got Halo on the uh, the Xbox, and you got. Uh, Kill Zone on PlayStation. I mean, whoop de doo right? They, they're both fairly similar. They, but in a lot of ways. But anyway, so anymore they're kind of stupid. Uh, if they had put more emphasis into exclusives and really making games better, then my, that might be uh, uh, that might change my opinion on it. But right now they're just kind of stupid and unnecessary. Um, and the fans really get on my nerves, by the way. Uh, let's see. Meta Itachi asks, what's your least favorite thing about PC gaming other than the lack of focus on it? Um, it's like, for example, updating specs, perhaps crashing, that sort of thing. Well, bugs and crashing are certainly annoying. Uh, you can generally work around those, though. What really bothers me is updating the specs. Uh, and it's because it's so expensive to upgrade half the time. And by the time you do upgrade, it's pretty much obsolete the next day. So, at least when you're in a good time of PC gaming. Uh, when you're not in a good time of PC gaming like we are now, then... Uh, like, my system is two years old, still maxes everything I throw at it. Granted, I do game at uh, fairly low resolution, but still... If I can put everything on the maximum except for the resolution and still get top-notch performance... Um, or at least to my uh, playability level, then... Um, it's kind of bad for PC gaming. Because those upgrades really drive PC gaming. And um, when they start uh, leveling off and basically becoming stagnant, it really just is detrimental for the for gaming as a whole. Um, next question. I've got two more questions from Meta Itachi. The first one is, what games do you think of off the top of your head you would like to showcase, showcase as innovative? I can't talk today very well. Anyway, um, innovative... Um, Portal was a really cool idea. You don't really see stuff like that. It wasn't a great game, but it was innovative in the concept, and I liked the humor, uh, so that was kind of cool. Uh, Deus Ex is really good um, for innovation, because it was one of the first really successful blends of RPG and first-person shooter, and it works really, really well. Um, as for other things, um, Battlefield 1942 was innovative at the time, because... We really hadn't seen fights that massive, which included vehicles. I mean, we had tribes, but 
it, that was different. That was all infantry combat. When Battlefield 1942 came out, the maps were gigantic. You had vehicles and everything, so that was really cool. Um, and, of course, there's the stuff that's innovative for its graphics. I mean, Crisis um, at the time, Quake engines and all that kind of stuff. But um, if you want some really, really good innovative stuff, uh, you might want to go with the uh, indie market. I mean, there, there's a few there that it really just blow you away. Like um, The Last Express, it was kind of a, I guess you'd call it an indie game. Um, but it was really kind of a very experimental title. And I don't actually have it, and I haven't actually played it. But it was it's a really interesting game because it, everything's rotoscoped. And so you got actual actors sitting there doing their thing, only they're a rotoscope to make them look like cartoons, kind of like in Tron. And it's actually really cool. So there's a few things here and there, but I, I really don't play all that many innovative games, at least not anymore, because it's kind of hard to find stuff anymore that's really hasn't been done before, you know? Anyway, uh, next question is again from Mede Itachi. Uh, what do you look forward to in the future of gaming, since my predictions seem kind of bleak for now, at least for PC gamers? Um, my hope is that we'll start to see more cross-pollination of genres. Uh, certain genres are really ripe for the picking. I mean, like, adventure games really haven't been... There, there haven't been many blends of those yet. Um, I mean, you had the blend of uh, role-playing game and adventure game with uh, Quest for Glory back in the day, but you don't really see that kind of thing anymore. So, I would like to see more innovation in terms of, like, genre uh, bending and that sort of thing. I would like to see more um, storytelling. And that's getting to be a bigger thing now, and that I'm really, really uh, liking that so far. Like, especially with Mass Effect, for instance. Um, telling a long saga is actually really something that you don't really see in gaming a lot. And we're starting to see it more and more and more. So, I'm hoping we get to see more of that kind of thing. I'm, I'm liking the more mature storylines we're getting, the more uh, in-depth ones that we're getting. Um, and, and you're starting to see, since graphics are kind of stagnating now, you're starting to see a little bit more emphasis on gameplay uh, again. And I, I'm looking forward to that kind of thing. And so, of course, like gaming-wise, uh, just games in general, uh, I'm looking forward to stuff like Deus Ex Human Revolution, the throwbacks to the old games, that in their own ways improve on things that were in the older ones and then still manage to hold their own, that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to that kind of stuff. But I'm not looking forward to cheap cash-ins like the new XCOM game, which is not going to be anything at all like XCOM. Anyway, um, next question. I've got two questions from MJ1284. The first one is, if you were given a task to come up with a new game that combines p features of two separate genres, what would make the most interesting combination? Um... Well, adventure games and role-playing games, uh, th that's something that really hasn't been explored a lot, so if they were to meld those two genres, it'd be nice. Um, y you've seen stuff like uh, Savage that's done uh, strategy games and shooters, and it actually works pretty well. I was very pleasantly surprised with uh, Savage 1 and 2. Um, granted, they're online only, and that kind of bothered me, but still. It it's a cool concept, and I'd like to see more of that kind of stuff, so maybe that. Um... But it's kind of hard to think of really, really good genre combinations. I mean, we're starting to see more, um, like, arena kind of stuff that seems more like sports games. Like, uh, Monday Night Combat, for instance. Um, and I, I'd like to see a lot of that kind of thing, but it's kind of hard to really pick two genres and blend them together without running into a bunch of problems. And so, um, maybe an RTS and an RPG... Uh, I mean, it's been done before, but it, it's something that you don't really see a lot. Um, next question is, again, from MJ1284. Uh, how long or since when have you been into PC game? Well, not PC, video gaming. Um, and how many hours do you spend on video games weekly? Weekly, it just depends. Um, if I'm busy, then I tend not to play that many games and end up playing maybe 10 hours a week. Uh, if I'm not busy... 20 plus, maybe 30, 40. It really just depends on whether I have absolutely nothing to do or not. So, because um, I do spend a lot of my free time gaming, and I, I just like doing it. 
Um, as for since when I've been into video gaming, since the early 90s, uh, specifically 1993. So, I pretty much started gaming on Doom. And, uh, so, obviously, PC gaming from the very beginning. Um, and, I, well, actually, uh, that was the first PC game I really got into. And I was playing Atari 2600 games before that. Uh, not much longer before that, but I, I was playing uh, Atari 2600, and I love that thing. Um, really fond memories of that Atari. Uh, and I actually got it back, so I can actually go in and do more videos and stuff like that. But uh, I've been in gaming for a while. Um, about, what, 20 years or so? Well, I'm getting close to 20 years. So, there you go. Um, Tofordo3 asks, what do you think about World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King? Is the game worth playing? How much are people vulnerable to addiction to WoW? First off, I haven't played La Wrath of the Lich King. I don't want to play it. It's an MMO. Does that kind of answer your question about is it worth playing? I don't like MMOs. They're just time sinks. They're stupid. They're... Ugh. So many things wrong with uh, MMOs. But how much are people vulnerable to addiction? I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard to really say that. Because um, if you look at it and you're like, okay, who gets addicted to World of Warcraft? People who are really, really lonely or really, really, really bored. And so I guess if you're extremely bored or extremely lonely, then you might like World of Warcraft. But I don't know. Um, I, I have the whole monotony problem that uh, keeps me from playing that kind of thing. So anyway. Um, Kalashnikov 96. Kalashnikov. Um, anyway. Uh, asks, what, if any, real-time action RPGs do you like? Because I don't like a, a Diablo and Oblivion. Wondering which ones you actually do like besides Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Um, I don't consider Dragon Age an action RPG. The second one is, but the first one isn't. Um, as for which action RPGs I do actually like, um, The Witcher, if it's considered one, um, is a really well done uh, action RPG. Um, apart from that, I just don't really play that many action RPGs. Uh, most of the ones I play are the more old-school variety, the, the party-based, they're kind of slow-paced, that kind of thing. So, I really don't play a lot of action RPGs, but, um, if I had to choose some, I guess, I guess if you can call gothic, um, action RPGs, because some people consider them action RPGs, um, apart from that, had Alpha Protocol not been so irritating with the uh, uh, mini games, it would have been fun. I liked Jade Empire a little bit. Um, it wasn't as good as other Bioware games, but I liked it. Um, Dark Messiah, Might and Magic, I, I really like that game. Um, Mountain Blade as well. I'm a fan of Mountain Blade, in case you've seen my reviews of those. Um, if you can consider those action RPGs, but I really just don't play a lot of those. Um, and then finally, a question from Tosuke. What do you play your PC games with? He's talking about like input, as in mouse and keyboard, keyboard only, gamepad, etc. Uh, if you play with a gamepad, what kind specifically? Well, I haven't played with a gamepad in years. Um, basically since the 90s, so that kind of sets that apart. Um, I haven't tried gaming with my uh, Xbox controller yet, but I'd probably try with the Xbox 360 controller that I have. Um, other than that, usually mouse and keyboard, unless it's an older, older game, like a platformer or a uh, one of the early first-person shooters that doesn't have up-down look. Um, in those, I actually uh, use just the keyboard. Uh, gotta do it old school, guys. Um, anyway, so there you go, folks. That's uh, Q&A video 7. I uh, hope you guys like that, and make sure to keep asking questions. And I'll catch you guys in later videos.